We spend billions of dollars on medical treatments for type 2 diabetes. Some of the medications used to treat diabetes cost hundreds to thousands of dollars a month. Yet the studies of the benefits of these treatments have only shown them to be effective in controlling some microvascular diseases, such as the need to treat retinopathy or kidney problems. The major studies have shown only very small benefits on macrovascular disease or mortality from aggressive medical treatment of type 2 diabetes. Most type 2 diabetes is caused by obesity. Wouldn't it make sense to treat the underlying cause of the diabetes rather than the diabetes itself? Wouldn't you expect better outcomes if you were treating the underlying disease? It's sort of like treating pneumonia with cough medications rather than antibiotics. Bariatric surgery results in the most sustained and profound weight loss of any intervention for obesity. So shouldn't bariatric surgery prevent macrovascular disease better than medical treatment for type 2 diabetes? That's a question that was answered in a study published in this week's JAMA. This article reported outcomes from a cohort study of severely obese patients with type 2 diabetes who had bariatric surgery and compared them to similar patients who were treated with usual care. The study was conducted at four integrated healthcare systems in the U.S., health partners in Minnesota, and three Kaiser Permanente sites. It included more than 5,000 severely obese patients aged 19 to 79 years with diabetes who underwent bariatric surgery from 2005 to 2011, with follow-up through 2015. These patients were matched to a cohort of almost 15,000 control patients by site, sex, age, BMI, hemoglobin A1C level, insulin use, duration of type 2 diabetes, and healthcare utilization. Of those who had bariatric procedures, most had gastric bypass, some had a sleeve gastrectomy, and a few had lap bands. The primary outcome was time to the development of macrovascular disease, defined as having a heart attack, developing unstable angina, getting an angioplasty or cardiac bypass, getting a carotid stent or endarterectomy, or having a stroke. In secondary analyses, each of the coronary artery disease and cerebrovascular outcomes was considered separately. All-cause mortality was also looked at as a post hoc exploratory outcome. So what did they find? There were half as many macrovascular events in the patients treated with bariatric surgery as in the medically treated patients. In the bariatric group, of the total number of macrovascular events in the study, there were 20 events per 1,000 patients compared with 40 events per 1,000 patients in the control group. There was a lower incidence of coronary artery disease but not cerebrovascular disease in the bariatric surgery patients at five years. In a post hoc analysis, the risk of all-cause mortality at five years was 1.3% among patients who underwent bariatric surgery and 4.5% in the control patients. In this study, bariatric surgery was associated with a lower risk of major macrovascular outcomes compared with usual medical care. The big question this study raises is how to best treat diabetes. So this study showed that after about five years, bariatric surgery resulted in half the number of macrovascular complications in patients with type 2 diabetes as did medical treatment. It really makes you wonder, why is it that insurance companies readily pay for very expensive medications to treat diabetes even though, as highlighted in a related editorial, there appears to be relatively weak evidence supporting aggressive medical management of type 2 diabetes for reducing cardiovascular events and mortality? Yet bariatric surgery, which is effective, is often not covered by insurance. Studies like the one published in this issue of JAMA contribute to an increasing body of evidence showing the efficacy of bariatric surgery, and this should cause policymakers and insurance companies to rethink funding priorities for treating type 2 diabetes.